Bienvenidos a Maestro Miracles. Yo soy Leslie Foster de Common Ground International. And if you are a teacher that needs to learn or improve your Spanish, you're in the right place. These are mini lessons for you to help you improve your Spanish so you can uh, reach those Spanish speaking students and their families in and out of the classroom. So, um, in la lección pasada, empezamos una unidad, you could say a unit or a mini series, all about manejo de aula, classroom management. And in our last lesson, if you didn't watch it, you'll want to go ahead and catch it because I refer to it in this lesson, but it's all about using lenguaje redirectivo, redirective language in español in el salón de clase. So, hoy, en esta lección, vamos a um, tomarlo un poquito más profundo, okay? And we're going to look at tres pasos in la redirección. So, yo no estoy aquí para enseñarles cómo um, uh, manejar el comportamiento, simplemente para darles el vocabulario y unos pasos en español que que pueden implementar en sus aulas, en sus salones, con sus estudiantes. Ok, so el objetivo de esta lección, educators will learn three steps to easily break down the Spanish and implement el lenguaje redirectivo en español. So, as a review, in the previous lesson we talked about a veces, you don't even need to use words, right? El um, lenguaje no verbal, la comunicación no verbal es super poderoso, right? Can be just as powerful as words. So it's always good to start with a little movimiento de la cabeza, contacto de los ojos, da, 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 da. Pero muchas veces, la mayoría de las veces tenemos que usar las palabras. En este caso, ok, vamos a ver tres patrones, three patterns, tres ejemplos that we saw last week, ok, and here's what we saw last week. I'm using necesito que tú, followed by this, the subjunctive, favor de, followed by a verbo en el infinitivo, so please do something, or using the collective voice, vamos a enfocarnos en este libro en este momento, ok, and then stating the obvious, maybe what seems obvious to you but not your students, but saying what's not appropriate. No es apropiado, okay? And then command, presta atención, abran los libros, um, agarra el pase para ir al baño, okay? Um, so these are what we reviewed, what we went over in la lección pasada, pero hoy vamos a ver tres pasos en la redirección. El primer paso muchas veces we need to den un aviso, we need to give a warning that algo bueno, algo super importante, algo muy relevante está llegando, something is coming that they need to pay attention to, that, um, that is really important, that they cannot be in otro mundo en ese momento. So you, oftentimes teachers, we have to give warnings. And what does that look like in Espanol? Okay. This, the uh, example in English, this is so important, I want you to pay attention. That's what oftentimes you, you say in English. In Espanol, okay, es es muy importante, enfócate, focus, or enfóquense, okay, presten atención, pay attention, so this is focus, pay attention, okay, vamos a aprender algo importante, vamos a repasar algo interesante, vamos a... Um, um, enfocarnos en algo muy relevante para esos estudios, ok? So, to give them a warning, this is how you give them a warning in español. Enfócate, enfóquense, um, presten atención, ok? Paso dos. Um, vamos a ver. Paso dos. Segundo paso, oftentimes, is what you are expressing what they need to do, ok? So, I need you to, and then followed by the subjunctive, which you talked about. Okay, so I need you to follow along. I need you to work with me. I need you to pay attention. Okay, so unos ejemplos. Necesito que me sigues. Necesito que trabajen conmigo. I need you to work with me. I need you to follow me. Okay, and este requiere el subjuntivo. If you have not learned the subjunctive, you can still use these expressions, these phrases, without knowing the grammatical bits and pieces behind it. Está bien. You don't have to have it all figured out from a grammar perspective in order to start using it. So go ahead and, and memorize these phrases if they're helpful for you. 
Y el tercer paso, the third paso, is usando la voz colectiva. So, unos ejemplos. So, if the first warning didn't work, okay, aviso, algo importante, presten atención, algo super importante viene, okay, if the first aviso didn't work, the second warning didn't work, <laughs> um, necesito que tú, um, uh, what do we say, necesito que tú, um, uh, necesito que ustedes saquen los libros, okay, that's, if that one's not working, then we go to the tercer paso, la voz colectiva, is a good tactic, okay, um, no es apropiado, so stating what is, what is um, not appropriate, and estos relate exactly to your classroom expectations, so if you know your classroom expectations in Espanol, then you can just put no es apropiado in front of them. If you need to learn your classroom expectations, you have to go back and view that lesson um, a while ago. So no es apropiado, um, no obedecer las reglas. No es apropiado um, tomar la propiedad de los otros, okay? And another way to say is estamos ahora, using the collective voice, estamos ahora leyendo. Right now we're reading. <laughs> Juancito, ahora estamos leyendo. Ahora estamos escribiendo. Okay, so um, some great ways to get the whole class um, on the same page in Espanol, okay? And sometimes it's just asking simple questions that prompt students to self-correct themselves, right? And so um, sometimes I find myself saying, ¿Qué debes estar haciendo en este momento? What should you be doing in this moment? Okay, ¿A dónde va este papel? Where does this paper go? ¿Cuál es la regla? ¿Cuál es la regla sobre chicle en el aula? What's the rule, <coughs> excuse me, about gum in the classroom? Okay, so just questioning. We often have to question our students and their behavior choices. So, ahora te toca a ti. It is your turn to take this from head knowledge or just listening, listening to this lesson and actually applying it. So, practiquen los tres pasos con el vocabulario que es relevante para ustedes, okay, carve out time out of your week, that, whether that looks like 10 minutes every single day or half an hour three times a week, okay, to watch this lesson and study and interact, use it, make mistakes, have fun, um, but use the Spanish and then let us know how it went, what in this lesson worked well, what did not, what, how can we make these lessons the most relevant for you. So that's it for this lesson. Um, if you're looking for Mas Español, you can look at the, all these videos on YouTube. Um, visit our Spanish for Teachers web page, which is Common Ground National forward slash Spanish for Teachers. Muchísimas gracias y hasta la próxima. Chao.